I'm gonna show you how to make moss like in these renders here in Blender. Step one is the moss models. And based on reference, we need one bunch of moss leaves and one of those longer stems. You can model these from scratch, but getting them to look anywhere near as good as the real thing is pretty much impossible, at least for me. So instead, I recommend you go outside, scary, I know, and take a 3D scan of a moss leaf bunch, as well as a top-down image of a stem. By the way, if you don't want to create any of these assets yourself, or you don't want to create the node setup I'm about to show you, then it's also available on my Gumroad, link in the description. But if you want to create it yourself, then import the image of the stem using the Images as Planes add-on, and cut it out using the Knife tool. Then extrude it upwards so that it's as thick as it is wide. And recalculate normals, just to be sure, by pressing Shift N. Lastly, select all the faces that have stretched UVs, view them straight on by pressing on the right axis here and press U, project from view. And finally, try to match it to the shape of the strand. Now that we have the texture done, we can move on to the shader, which luckily is pretty easy. Add a principal PSDF and plug the texture into the base color and subsurface radius. Set the subsurface weight to 0.6 and use a noise texture for the roughness. Then to add a bit more detail, plug a high scale, high detail, high roughness noise texture into a bump node with a strength of 0.3 and plug that bump node into the normal. Then add a translucent in PSDF, plug the texture into the color, the bump into the normal, and add it together with the principle using an add shader node. And there you have the strand material. Lastly, you'll also want to scale the strand so that it has these dimensions. For the mouse leaves, just import the 3D skin and decimate it heavily. How much depends on how close you want to get with the camera. Then afterwards, you'll want to set up its shader as well. To do that, once again, add a translucent and principled PSDF, add them together and plug the albedo into the base color of both the shaders as well as the subsurface radius. Then just like last time, increase the subsurface weight to 0.6, add a bit of bump using a noise texture with these settings and vary the roughness using another one. Also, you'll want the moss leaves to have these dimensions. And that's the moss done. So now onto procedurally scattering the moss where it would naturally grow. The first thing we need is to create the mask of where the moss will appear. So slide on over to the geometry nodes workspace, create a new setup and add in a normal node. Then plug it into a separate XYZ and once we view the Z, we can see that it isolates the top of our object, which is perfect. But right now it would look a little bit too perfect because it's lacking that randomness. So to roughen it up a bit, we need to add a noise texture with these settings, as well as a mixed color node, which you'll want to set to linear light. Now, if we plug the normal into the A socket, the color output of the noise texture into the B socket, and finally plug the mixed color nodes result into the separate XYZ, the Z looks a lot rougher and thus natural. Now let's actually scatter our mask. So add in a distribute points and faces node, plug the geometry input into the mesh and our mouse mask into the selection. Then increase the density to 35,000. To instance our mouse on those points, we need an instance on points node, into which you're gonna plug the points as well as the rotation. Then add an object info node, select the mouse leaves and plug the geometry output of the object info node into the instance. But if we look at the current state of the mouse, we can see that the rotation is completely uniform. So to fix that, add a rotate rotation node and switch the type to local. Then add a random value node, set it to vector, leave the min at 000, but change the max to 000 6.4. Then plug the value into the rotate by, which as you can see, randomly varies the rotation. While on the topic of randomization, let's randomize the scale too. To do that, I'll do two things. First, I'll add another random value node, set its min to 0.35 and its max to 0.7. Then plug it into the scale. This is nice, but we can do better. So add a noise texture with a scale of 92, multiply it by two, and then multiply the random value node with that. And that's random enough for me. There is still a problem left, however, which is that the mouse has no fall off and that looks pretty unnatural. To fix that, just take our mouse mask and one last time multiply the scale with, which then shrinks down the mouse to a very small size. The reason for that is that the normal node starts to go off of the actual mouse instances instead of the surface we're scattering on. The solution to that is to add a capture attribute node, plug the geometry into the geometry and our mouse mask into the value. Then once you swap out the geometry and selection inputs of the distribute points and faces node, it'll just work because the capture attribute node sort of saves the value for later, which then looks much better. For the strands, we can just duplicate this entire setup and make just three changes to it. Number one, you'll want to change the seed of the distribute points on faces node. Number two, decrease the density to 10,000. And lastly, number three, swap out the model in the object info node for the mass strand. Now just join everything together, the strands, the leaves, and the geometry we're scattering on using a join geometry node. And now the mouse is pretty much done. But there are two more things you're gonna wanna know. Number one, if you want to tweak the fall off, you can add a color ramp to the mouse mask and then tweak the black and white sliders. Two, if your scene is laggy, just decimate the mouse some more. You need very little resolution to get good results. Unless you're getting super, super close to the mouse with the camera, which in that case, you can just create one setup with the detailed mouse and have that close to the camera and one setup with the low-res grass and have that further away from the camera and optimize it that way. But 
yeah. But that's it. You should now have some good looking moss. And if this video helped you at all, then please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.